Hello, good afternoon. My name is Omkar Ajit Savant. We are recording this on 4th of October 2022 after approximately 3 p.m. So I'm just going to share my presentation with all of you guys. Just uh, after the presentation, you'll be given a set of questions, set of question bank to fill in. Please listen to the presentation. There are tips and tricks. And hopefully that should help you, you know, answer most of the questions. So let me share my PPT with all of you guys. Uh, one second. So, yeah. So that's my topic. And the topic is urinary tract infections. So um, let's discuss urinary tract infection. All of them look like beer glasses. Just have a look at them because this is an important hint and you might get something based on that. There is something interesting with these beer glasses in the future. So let's go through the usual, uh, how we'll proceed with this. We'll first discuss about the anatomy. We'll discuss about the physiology. Subsequently, what might be the pathophysiology, why people get urinary tract infection, what are the risk factors or how do clinically what's the clinical presentation of patients with a urinary tract infection there's also you know let's go through run through the investigations advice and then uh, subsequently the treatment and the advice how you can advise someone with having a uti of recurrent uti so yeah anatomy wise if you consider your urinary tract infection uh, urinary tract system imagine i am standing in front of you like this so if you cut open through me this is how my urinary system would look like so if you look at them there are sort of three major points so first are the kidneys you might have heard of kidneys you know kidney infection and stuff like that so kidneys are one of the important part of the urinary tract pathway there's also these two tubes which sort of get the uh, waste products from the kidney and they bring it to the bladder. This pink structure, that's called as a urinary bladder. So this is a normal part of anybody's anatomy having with uh, sort of for you to produce urine. There's obviously there are these blood blood vessels, you know, so some, you know, there's one of them carrying all the all the toxic products from the body to the kidneys and then once that blood gets purified it's carried away out from the kidneys so that's how the filtration process happens urine is manufactured over here it comes down like this to the ureters it's called stored in the bladder and once the bladder is full you feel the urge that you have to go to the toilet and you go ahead and just empty it so going on Let's have a look. However, you know, even despite this system being same in both men and women, there are major differences how men and women pass urine, basically based on the external genitalia or the external organs through which men and women differ. So first of all, obviously, if you remember the previous diagram, there was this bladder and the two ureters come to this, come from the back of the urinary bladder. Imagine someone is standing facing the other side, facing to the side. So this is, if you cut through me, because I'm a male, okay, I can venture being this man. So if you cut through me, so that's my bladder. And then this is the urethra through which the urine is thrown away, excavated out of my body. An important organ to bear in mind for men will be the prostate. So just bear in mind, just think, just know that this is the prostate organ. I will subsequently tell you why it is important for someone having urinary tract infection, mainly in the main. So let's go to a female organs. So imagine if I was a female and you cut through me like this and I'm facing like that. So this is what you would see. So first of all, there is the urinary bladder, which is the same bladder which we saw over here. It's the same structure, the bladder. And then it opens up, you know, this is the urethra through which the urine passes from the bladder through outside. And this is the spot, this is the hole, it's called as the orifice or the opening. So this is the urinary orifice. If you have a look next to the urinary orifice, there is this uterus where, you know, where there's pregnancy and all the 
uh, all the usual monthly cycle and everything, you know, menstrual cycle happens here. So this is the e uterus and this is the vaginal opening. Not so far from that is the rectum through which, you know, feces are passed out, you know, uh, in, in a healthy female and in, in, in most females. So, yeah. So if you have a look, these three tubes are almost, you know, close to each other. Remember this point because we'll discuss that, you know, the re rationale for this. So, yeah, these are the basic differences between the anatomy of male and uh, male and a female just when it comes to passing out urine. Going ahead next. Let's have a look at the pathophysiology. Let's have a look at this diagram. Let's go through this. So there's, if you can see, I'll slow this out again and I'll explain it. Okay, fine. What's happening here is, if you look, so through the blood, blue blood, blood vessels, there's this blood which is coming out. It gets split into the two kidneys, you know, and then this yellow structure, you know, that's basically the urea, uric acid and all those components which are metabolized by the body following the breakdown of protein that's manufactured and when that's made that blood is taken to the kidneys for filtration so that subsequently goes into the kidneys now once it goes through like this from the kidney there's filtration which happens and once the blood is filtered the fresh blood is taken away from both the kidneys you can see it over here and along with that some amount of urine is also made. So when that urine is made, it's transported onto the bladder. So this is what exactly is shown in the diagram. So that's what's happening. And then once the bladder, this happens over a period of time, this cycle is almost ongoing. And over a period of time, you can see that the bladder is slowly getting full, okay? So yeah, let's have a look, run through quickly. So yeah, again, you know, it's the, everything goes in the kidneys, everything comes out. And that's how the bladder gets full. Now, once this is initially, you know, after a few drops, you know, it, it's not that bad. But once it starts getting full over and over again, that's when it, it gets to a capacity where, you know, you feel the urge that you have to go to the toilet. And that's when you go and sort of, you know, pass urine. So that's the normal process. How do men and women pass urine? That's also interesting. So similar to the previously discussed, so apologies, sorry. So similar to previously discussed. So yeah, if you see the through the ureters, the urine comes to the bladder, yeah? And as the bladder gets full, the moment you have full, you have to go to the toilet. That's when you feel the urge to go to a toilet and then you empty your bladder. So that's, it's important to know this process and the proximity of, you know, the prostrate in this uh, system. Similar things with females. So the moment the ureters bring the urine into the bladder, the bladder becomes full and then you feel the urge to, you know, make to it or to pass urine. So that, that's the normal physiology. That's how normal people sort of, you know, go to the toilet. Now, let's look at the pathophysiology Miss, let's start with females because unfortunately females tend to suffer from UTIs more frequently, especially when uh, uh, when they are you know so from a young age right up to the old age the percentage remains fairly constant and females tend to suffer a lot from the UTI. Now what might be the reason for it? The biggest reason is poor hygiene. Imagine if this area remains dirty, there is a chance that you know all the dirt or anything can pass, you know, can get collected over here. And while during the act of passing the urine, it can go up. And that's when the bladder infection or, you know, any urinary tract infection can happen. So poor hygiene is the biggest reason why, uh, number one reason rather, why females are more predisposed to having urinary tract infection. The important thing to understand is that, see, this is the urinary orifice and see how close it is to the anus and to the vagina. So, you know, the chances of cross infection. So if you are trying to sort of, you know, wipe or clean this area, if one stroke like that, that there's a chance of, you know, all the fecal matter and all the microorganisms to enter into this system. Similarly with vagina as well, if you're inserting anything in the vagina, any contraception or anything, there is a chance, high chance. And if there's any infection there, there's a high chance it can pass up to the bladder and cause the UTI. So yeah, that's the reason how infections can spread. 
if you know as i said you know this is the uterus this is through which most of the gynecological issues happen childbirth happens or anything so if there's any old sort of trauma or sort of prolapse or anything like that which is going on in for females for any gynecological problem that can predispose females to have an infection if there is a fistula fistula is basically a you know it's like a passage which is formed from the bladder to the uterus or bladder to the rectum so any fistula or anything like that there's high chance that there can be a cross infection and cause uti as as discussed prolapse if the whole uterus sort of prolapses downwards there is a chance that you know there's an infection spread into the bladder introduction of catheters so any foreign body any foreign things inside this you know there's a high chance they can develop urinary tract infection that's why you might have seen heard the dns don't like to keep the catheters for a long time unless you know you know through through this route so yeah it's just something to be aware of catheters or any foreign object can also cause that sexual intercourse unfortunately you know again you know if there is sexual you know multiple partners or the use of you know, you know different sex sex products lubricants or anything like that then there is also a chance that you know, you females can have a urinary tract infection so yeah females are unfortunately more predisposed and more it's common to have utis in females stuff female pe- uh, females uh, be- basically yeah let's talk about the males uh, in males younger males are not that predisposed to having a urinary tract infection unfortunately the numbers do increase in older males and the biggest reason for that is the prostate enlargement so if once people start once men start aging that's the time when this there's enlargement happening over the prostate prostate hypertrophy and now that can sort of hinder the passage of the urine and that can cause increased risk of urinary tract infection prostate cancer is also one of the risk factors for this again poor hygiene can lead to anything you know if the hygiene is not great for men as well that can lead to a chance of urinary tract infection sexual intercourse self explanatory why it might happen and obviously the risk of risk factors definitely increases with increasing age so yeah pathophysiology now we have noted that how sort of the infection gets over here and it can go up so any chances of infection of any of these organs you just saw the system how efficiently it works and because of that sometimes if the infected organisms enter this route you know and they can infect any of these organs the most common micro so any organs can be infected that's what i said the most common microorganism is the e coli just remember there are many microorganisms which can cause infection e coli being the biggest reason why you know you can have uh, infections so if there's an infection of the kidneys it's called as nephritis if it's of the bladder it's called as cystitis and of the ureters it's called urethritis or even the urethra in that sense okay so yeah one of the biggest reasons why infections also can happen is because of the incomplete emptying so imagine if you we just saw that the bladder gets full and it gets expelled so imagine if some residual urine still remains there's a chance that you know the infection comes up and then it can spread up so residual urine which is if there is retention and it's not emptying completely that's a risk of infection so in these structures if there's any abnormalities like a tumor if there's an old surgery or if there's a fistula you know definitely there's a passage and then there can be back passage of water that's how infections can spread uh poor hydration if there are not enough fluids you know not enough you know if this uh, uh, cycle is not functioning efficiently because of poor water intake that is also a risk factor so kidneys have to work extra hard just to save your body water from your body so that can be lead to infection as well poor immunity diabetes you know again diabetes affects the microcirculation so again you know your chances of infection do become high when you have diabetes if there's a blockage if there's a kidney stone or anything like that or is similarly if there's a catheter over here again a foreign body with stones what happens is that if there is a stone there is an efficient f- uh, movement of the fluid and that can give get rise to again back, you know retention and then that can give rise to infection so just be aware of all these factors genetically some people are just predisposed to have the uti as more frequently than the others 
So yeah, what would be the clinical presentation if you want to ask anyone, you know, the major things, major signs and symptoms of any urinary tract infection? Let's start with the urinary symptoms first. So the main issue is increased frequency, change in toilet habits. Are they going on infrequently? Is the pad getting wet sooner or later? So that's one of the chance, to, one of the risk factors. If there's a stinging or burning sensation while urinating, that's also one of the risk presentations to UTI. If there's incontinence, if there's wetting of trousers and everything, that's also one of the chances. If these all these things are new, you know, definitely suspect UTI. And similarly, cloudy or dark urine, that's also one of the factors which can cause urinary tract infection. But for us, the most important thing is the clinical presentation. This is something which we can spot easily going into people's houses and doing their exercises. They can, you know, there can be fever, there can be malaise. You know someone who's been to ex engaging well in the exercises, all of a sudden feels, feels feverish. No, I don't want to do any exercises. I'm not bothered two or three times decline. So yeah, let the SP know, you know, that's where we come into picture just to know if there's any infection or anything like that. If frequent falls is one of the major, it's one of the major symptoms of urinary tract infection. It's uh, and decline in mobility as well. If someone was doing exercises, all of a sudden there are changes, have, have, have a suspicion for urinary tract infection as well. Nausea and vomiting, that's also an important factor. Any deterioration in physical and functional ability, they used to go to the toilet on their own, do the bathing on their own. Suddenly, they cannot do that, increase the package of care or anything. Is there, if you feel that's the need, suspect UTI as well. Poor engagement, confusion, and delirium, that's also one of the factors. If they're confused, if you know they used to respond well, all of a sudden they seem confused, they seem not with it, they feel agitated, suspect UTI, please. Important factor which many people miss out is and if everyone come anyone complains of back pain or groin pain, just have a suspicion on for UTI as well because that's how UTIs do present. So what would you do if you suspect a UTI? First things first, inform the nurse on call. Just ask them, you know, see the patient, take the ops. You know, if they are within the limit still, just make a phone call to the nurses, you know. Chances are that we might be able to do something or, you know, it's it's good to for the team to be aware of. If possible, if the next of kin have informed the GP, you can inform the GP, you can give the presentation, you can give them the readings, the blood pressure and everything if it's abnormal and then also update the SP for an assessment. Investigations, which are most commonly done in the medical fraternity is, you know, they do the urine analysis. That's the urine lipstick is the most common easy to do uh, test basically sometimes it can be negative yet people have UTS so be mindful of that but yeah that's the most easiest test to do there's also blood investigations which the doctors can ask for and then urine culture to identify what bacteria it is and based on that they can give them the antibiotics and then the kidney function test also can be requested for them so treatment, most of it is medical treatment. So that's why whenever you have a UTI, someone with a UTI, we can, as we tend to pause the exercises or just, you know, with withdraw treatment, you know, phys physiotherapy or occupational therapy treatment briefly and that the management is more supportive management. So medical management is obviously adequate hydration. You have to make sure that uh, the uh, patient is well hydrated, making sure they're drinking. They can ask for medication reviews. They can stop some of the kidney tablets or certain painkillers as well, with, which can have an adverse effect on the kidney. So do watch out for that. So that's why medication review is always requested for someone with kidney infections or UTI. Antibiotics are commenced just to help with the you know recovery process. And then management of symptoms as well. If you feel you know these patients are finding it difficult to cope, refer to at home or hospital, you know, that would be your line of management. IV antibiotics are sometimes given in the hospitals. They might help patients to improve in serious cases. And as far as possible, you have to try and avoid catheters. You know, that's what the district nurses are, you know, run for. You know, that's one of their major considerations to remove people's as quickly as uh, possible from, from the catheterization. 
So yeah, what advice would you give to someone with a kidney, you know, who's having a urinary tract infection? Basics, make sure that you're hydrating well. Make sure that, you know, your urine color, it's of, it is of a lighter color. It shouldn't be, you know, very dark in color or anything like that. We'll discuss that. So hydration is definitely one of the important things on the agenda. Keep the genital area dry and clean. Change your pads, change your trousers. Make sure it's clean and dry. Change, yeah, changing pads. Avoid wearing tight undergarments. That's also one thing. So, you know, make sure that your trousers or everything is a bit loose rather than very tight. Avoid alcohol. Alcohol does irritate bladder. So just, you know, if you can advise them to stop alcohol, you know, that would be good. So, so you might have heard that cranberry juice is very important for people with UTI. You might have heard it in the papers and stuff like that. However, do watch out that unless advised by a medical professional, please do not recommend this. Stick to water. That's the, your safest bet because patients on warfarin on certain medications, cranberry juice is not indicated. So just watch out for that. So you might have heard it in the papers, cranberry juice is good, but for our patients, you know, if you don't know the medical summary and everything, let them stick to water. And if their GP has cleared them to have cranberry juice, that's fine. That's, that's all right as well. So yeah, basically that my rationale for asking you the beer chart at the start was just to Explain it to the patients, you know, what would be, what should be your ideal color of your urine. It's usually the lager color, the one, you know, this should be your usual color, almost water, you know, almost transparent. The darker it gets, that means that you are dehydrated. So yeah, this is okay, you know, like almost like a beer. If it's like an IPA or the pale ale, then okay, you know, you need to watch out. If it's full blown like a Guinness, then head to ER, that's what they say. But yeah, as far as possible, try and stick to this color. That's what you can tell your patients to the color of a lager, color of a beer or something like that. So that or, or a very light lemon juice. So yeah. OK, if they are not alcoholic. Thank you very much. I'm just going to stop recording now.